In this video, I will show you how you can install Epic Game Store on your favorite Linux distro and how you can play your favorite games on Linux. We will start from zero and then go to Hero, and by that I mean the Heroic Game Launcher, which is a Linux version of the Epic Game Store. So in this video we will install that one. After that we will install and play some games and also make a performance comparison between Windows and Linux on the same hardware. But before we start, welcome to the channel, here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links and comments from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. What you can see here is Zorin OS, which is a Windows user-friendly Linux distribution. It is based on Ubuntu and the good thing about this one is that it does not force snap packages on you. Snap packages are distro agnostic, you can install them on any Linux distro, so to say. I see why it's good, but I don't like the performance hit when you start the application for the first time. When the application is up and running, it runs just fine, but this initial startup time after the reboot is not so great. I would rather prefer to install from a native dev package, but in this case we will use something completely different, we will use Flatpak. This one, the full Zorin OS, was installed on a USB drive and it's actually running from the USB drive right now. If you are interested how to install this one or some other distro on a persistent USB drive, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description, I have a lot of them. So let's install the Heroic Launcher. First, right click on software and remove from favorites, because we will not use this one. It was a nice try, but no. And go to the Heroic Launcher GitHub page. This is where we want to be. And now scroll down to installation Flatpak, click on the link. And now down here, this is the command we want, so copy that and open the terminal, paste it here. Flatpak is another cross-distro packaging format and although it doesn't have this lag when starting the applications for the first time, like Snap does, it installs and runs the application in a sandbox kind of environment, which is good from the security perspective, but this makes things a lot more complicated. Usually mixing Flatpak with other kinds of applications doesn't work that well together, my advice would be if you use Flatpak applications and you know that these applications will depend on each other, then use Flatpak all the way, if there is a Flatpak version of the application. So in this video we will try to stick with Flatpak. And enter install. And now just wait for the download. Perfect, let's run it. Go to games. And here it is, heroic game launcher. Let's run it. First you get the change log, that's okay. Then go to login. Here you can log in with your Epic Games account or with the GOG account. So this Heroic Game Launcher actually works with two stores, with Epic Games and GOG. Here I will go with Epic Games. Now log in with your account, I will do it as well. Perfect, I'm logged in, go to library. And now here you can see all the games from your library. All of those games are basically made for Windows and to play them on Linux we first need to install a compatibility layer. And this compatibility layer is called Wine. If you want to run Windows applications on Linux, at some point you will need to use Wine, so with playing games, it's no different. So first let's install a Wine version. Go to Wine Manager and let's refresh the list. Now here you have a list of latest Wine versions to choose from. The best would be to go with the latest version. At the time of recording it's this one, so let's download it. Perfect, it's installed. Here you can also go to the location where it's installed. And all these versions that you can see here are from Vine Glorious Eggroll repository. The other repository that you can choose from is Proton Glorious Eggroll. You can also choose one of those if you want. As far as I remember, those are used with Steam. It's not guaranteed that it will work with the Epic Game Store games. So for this video, I will ignore those. Now with Vine, it's a hit or miss. Maybe this version will work for your game, maybe it will not. Maybe you will need to install some other version. So that's why in this video I will also install some older version, maybe this one, just to have a plan B. Alright, we have this one as well, so let's go back to the library. Before we download and run a game, we need to make sure that we are using the latest drivers, for the graphics card for instance. On this GitHub page from Lutris, which is also a game launcher, you can find the instructions how to install the driver for your graphics card. In my case it's AMD, so let's copy this command right here, copy it. And let's paste it into the terminal and execute. Just let it install. Perfect, the drivers are installed. Now you will need to restart your machine. I will do it as well and I'll see you after the restart. 
we are back after the restart and I already launched the heroic game launcher. And now with this you're actually good to go, you can try to download the game and try to play it. But before I do that I will install two additional things. I will install Mango HUD, which is actually an FPS counter basically, an overlay, because I want to track the performance. So scroll down to where it says flat pack, copy this command and paste it into the terminal, enter install. Let's go with the version 2 and yes, perfect, installation complete. The next thing on the list is game mode, which is basically a pack of optimizations that will be applied to Linux while the game is running, so the game should run more flawlessly. I couldn't find the Flatpak version of this one, so we will need to install it using the apt package manager, and fingers crossed that it will work with other Flatpaks. So let's install it, game mode. It was already installed on my machine. And now in addition to that, let's also install the game mode GNOME extension, so click on this link and continue installation, add, and ok. Now back to the terminal, and now in the terminal install game tweaks and gnome shell extension game mode. So enter and install, and now if you go back and refresh the browser page, you should see a switch here, just turn it on and install, and now if you go to extensions, you will see game mode, it's already active, let's go to settings, I want the notifications and I want the icon. And now you should also see this icon down here. Currently game mode is off, but it will switch on once we launch the game and you will also get a notification. So let's close that. Back to Heroic Game Launcher and now we are ready to download the first game. For this video I will choose the game Fist, Forged in Shadow Torch. Let's download it. Here you can select the path where the game should be installed. I will leave this one as it is. Down here you can see where the Vine prefix will be saved. The Vine prefix is basically the C drive of the Vine environment, every application can have its own prefix, and in our case every game will have its own prefix. I will leave this one as it is, then down here you can choose the Vine version, which should be used with this game. In this drop down we already have two versions, because we installed two previously. I will go with the latest one, Glorious Eggroll Proton 7.37, and install. Now the game is being downloaded, here you can see the progress, so let's wait for the download. Alright, download complete, here it is. Now I will go to settings and scroll down to other and now to have the best performance I will enable async, e fsync, I will use game mode and mango hud because I want to see the fps counter. If you have a dedicated graphics card you can also enable this one but I will leave it as it is, close and we can now finally start the game, so let's run it, play. The first time you run the game you will get this vine configure window. This one configures the Vine prefix and it only happens the first time you start the game, so let's wait for this one. If you get any prompts like this one where it wants to install the C++ runtime, just install all of them, so yes, and follow the installation wizard. This is all part of the Vine prefix setup, setup successful, and here is the game. In the upper left corner we can see Mango Hut, the FPS counter. Now before I play it, I will set the video settings no FPS limit and everything too high. Alright, and now I will play this game with the Linux setup as it is right now and then I will also play it on Windows with the same setup on the same hardware and then compare those two. For screen recording I will use OBS on both like I'm doing right now and for the FPS counter on Windows I will use the MSI Afterburner. I will do my very best to play the same on Linux and on Windows so we can compare those two. So let's see the performance difference.
And there you have it, it took me a few tries to get the gameplay synchronized on Windows and Linux. At first Windows performed a bit better, but then after 20 or 30 minutes of gameplay the frame rate dropped on both. And after that Linux performed just a little bit better and that was the actual footage you saw. But for me it just felt the same. After that I was playing longer sessions and although both performed the same, on Windows I noticed sudden frame rate drops to about 30 or 20 FPS and this was really noticeable while playing. And the interesting part is I did not experience this extreme frame rate drops on Linux. So my conclusion would be with this particular game, when you start playing, Windows performs better with at least 5% FPS difference and then while playing longer sessions the frame rate drops on both and Linux gets a slight edge by not having these extreme frame rate drops. And that's all for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me, it makes the channel grow, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.